So what we started is to collect signatures over the people to, to show that they have no confidence in this government. Ruto got to, supposedly, according to Bukati, 7.1 million. Already have 8 million signatures signed, authentic people who are registered, who are saying that they have withdrawn their, uh, 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 their support for Mr. Ruto and Mr. Gachago. So right. this we are also going to present. Uh, I think the question was on the cost of living. Um, it's not only affecting Kenya the world over, we also have the weakening of the, of the dollar and other factors. What, in your opinion, would, would it be for uh, the cost of living to be brought down? You see, you said, and I said, I was talking from experience, as somebody who was around the government also before, you said that uh, you do not deal with the cost of living by increasing taxes. In fact, if you increase taxes, you are in increasing the cost of living in the country. They are saying they are increasing taxes because they want to pay debts. And I say that there are other ways in which you can deal with the debt issue, debt crisis, other than just trying to increase taxes to pay the, the, those debts. The economy is in recession. So if the economy is in recession, you, what you do is uh, you create consumption. You inject money into the economy so that people have got money in their pocket that they can spend. And then the e economy will, will revive. So what they have done basically is removing money from people's pocket to be able to pay. So you're in the hole and you continue to dig deeper. I don't know who is advising them. But we've got very, very good economists who would advise them better. And that's why I'm saying that the media would have handled this situation differently. But we have been here before, and we got out of it with the former president, Mike back. So and we, we can get out of it. Veteran Kenyan opposition leader Lilo Dinga on Tuesday denounced unprecedented police violence during the anti-government and anti-expense protests that have been taking place in the Eastern African country in recent months. Since March, the opposition coalition Azmir has organized nine days of action against the policies of President William Ruto, sometimes resulting in looting and clashes with the police. According to Azmir, at least 50 people have been killed since March, some 20 according to official figures. We are witnessing unprecedented police violence, said Lilo Dinger at a press conference for foreign media in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Police and gangs have shot and killed or wounded dozens of people at point blank range. He claimed, maintaining that all the victims were unarmed. According to him, the violence was particularly aimed at the rulers, the ethnic group which he hails. Accusing the opposition of inciting violence, President Ruto affirmed on Wednesday his support for the police who must ensure that they are firm against criminals, gangs, anarchists and all those who want to show chores. Human rights organizations denounced the repression carried out by the police, who sometimes fired live ammunition. A coalition of 29 NGOs, including Amnesty International, claimed on Friday to have documented 27 extrajudicial summary and arbitrary executions during the five days of action organized in July. Instead of peaceful demonstrations, Azmio called for marches and vehicles of solidarity for victims of police violence. We call on Kenyans to come out, light candles and lay flowers in their memory, it announced in a statement on Monday. Elected in August 2022, William Luto is facing growing opposition. In particular, he is accused of adding to the difficulties of Kenyans already struggling with ongoing inflation. 80% sent year on year in June, with a law enacted in early July introducing new taxes. These protests were about the cost of living and excessive taxes, and they will continue, said the opposition leader, despite the law turnout for the latest days of mobilization on Thursday and Friday. Last week, the UN and the Commonwealth Secretariat and leading Kenyan media called on Ruto and Odinga to engage in dialogue. 
we have already said that we are open to dialogue, assured Mr. Odinger. The opposition had cancelled demonstrations scheduled for April and May after William Ruto had agreed to hold talks. The talks collapsed, leading to the resumption of actions since the beginning of July.